So here we are in Reprice Hub, and let's just go over how to get this all configured and set up and ready. So uh, by default, we're kind of here on the Products tab. You've got a little toggle switch if you want to make you know the thing go away here, but I like to keep it like this just so I can you know, see what's going on. So Products, uh, we don't have anything listed on this account yet, so that's why nothing is showing up, but there's a bunch of really cool, useful features that you can do. Um, you know, that you can, this is basically where just where everything that you have listed shows up. Stuff will basically just, you know, light up. You can see all this info here. It's just, this is sort of, sort of like the overview place where you can see everything that you have up. And if you have the buy box, if you have the lowest price, you know, how, how stuff's going, all that different stuff. Uh, but that doesn't really matter here because we don't have anything listed at the moment. This is just where it's going to show up. Now, Lister, we are going to come back to that because we have to sort of do our settings first. So actually, let's go ahead and uh, do that now. We'll go to our settings. And this is just kind of like a template that you can use and apply to all your listings to save you some time. Uh, when you're you know creating listings so I hit add new and it pops up here we're just gonna give it a name I'm gonna do Walmart um, preset whatever Walmart preset that's fine Mart there, ah, Mart okay cool uh, and profits uh, this we're gonna kind of actually overwrite with our repricing strategy in a minute so it doesn't really matter a ton I guess you can just leave it at the default 15% or you can go 10% you know uh, that's pretty decent for Amazon, but you know, whatever you want, 15%, that's fine too. I'll, I guess I'll just leave it there. Uh, Amazon fee is, you know, right now the Amazon fee is 15%. Every time you sell something, 15% uh, of that money just goes to Amazon. So we'll just leave that where it is. But if for some reason you wanted to like adjust it, you could, but there's kind of no point right now. Uh, supplier shipping costs. So if you are ordering from a supplier that has free shipping, you can leave it at zero. Um, some suppliers like Walmart are free shipping if it's over $35. So if you're only listing items that are over $35, then you could just leave this at free because you know your shipping is gonna be gonna be free over $35. Or if it's like this one, if you're listing lower cost items where it's gonna be $5.99 for shipping, then you can just go ahead and put in like $5.99. Uh, you can even have Walmart small preset like this one. So it's, if it's like a small item that's less than 35, or maybe I'll just even type that in, Walmart less than 35 preset. Um, so tax, uh, if you've got you know a percentage of tax that you wanna calculate, you can put that in. As a drop shipper, uh, you can get tax exempt. You just have to have an LLC set up and then you know get your, your stuff figured out because uh, in most states, uh, if you are a drop shipper that's reselling a product without ever physically touching it, uh, you don't actually have to pay sales tax on that because it, it would you know the government would be getting the sales tax twice. So um, you don't need to pay sales tax. You can get tax exempt um, if you do that, and and that can help you you know be more competitive too. But it's annoying. You don't have to start with that, but it is it is a good way to make a little bit more money and get sort of you know a couple cents off every order, uh, a couple bucks. You know, sort of depends on how big the the items are that you're selling. Uh, supplier discount, this is for like if you are, you know, cash back or something like that. So, uh, you know, say you've got a 5% cash back credit card, because right on here they're prompting us, right? Earn 5% cash back. So if you have this credit card, you're getting a 5% discount, you can sort of factor that into your repricing, uh, or you can just leave it off depending on you know what you want to do. Because uh, generally you don't have to pay taxes on cash back, uh, at least as I understand it. I'm not a financial advisor, tax advisor, any of that stuff. But um, yeah, you can uh, account that you know into your your pricing or not. Uh, bundle quantity here is um, it, it's not relevant for this listing, but imagine the Amazon listing here was for two chairs. Uh, and we had this listing for a single chair, but it's like every time we get one sale here, we have to order two chairs. Uh, then that's sort of what you can use the bundle quantity for. So you could be like, you know, this is the link, but we're actually ordering two or whatever. So for here, you're just going to want to do one and probably change it manually if you need to. Uh, and then here, one of the really important ones is handling time. Now, if you watched the previous video, we had this diagram and we were talking about, uh, actually, you know what? Ignore the bottom part. We're just looking here right now. Talking about handling time, uh, we set our shipping time on Amazon to basically four business days. Uh, and then we figured out that our supplier, which was Zorro, uh, needed six business days to, you know, deliver the product for sure. It might be there earlier, but they needed, you know, a wiggle room of, of six, six business days to be able to get it there for sure. So we have to make sure that the time we're telling them, our handling time plus our shipping time is going to be uh, a bigger number than six. We can't tell them, you know, five, because if these combined were five, uh, then we would be promising to get it there a day before, you know, and it might end up being a day late. That would hurt our metrics. So basically six days to get the product to the buyer is what, you know, it's going to take if we're immediately placing the orders the same day. Uh, so we need to make sure we're accounting for that or giving us an extra day right here for seven days. Uh, cause if it's definitely going to arrive in six days and then we give ourselves seven days, uh, we got a day of wiggle room there. So, um, anyway, 
you you understand handling time, shipping time, all that stuff, I assume. Uh, so yeah, this is where we're setting handling time, uh, like we talked about right here. Three day handling time. You don't do that through Amazon. You do that through Reprice Hub, and then Reprice Hub, when you're creating listings, sort of shoots it over to Amazon. And then also the default quantity to show that you have left in stock. Um, you know, you could set this to ten. You could set this to a hundred. Uh, I'm just gonna set it to like three because that's good. Oh no, I lost my settings there. I clicked out of it. Ah, let me see here. Um, let's see, Walmart under thirty five, um, and we're gonna set this to what was it? Six ninety nine. Is that what shipping costs? $5.99, tax zero, supplier discount zero, bundle quantity one, handling time three days, and quantity three. Yeah, you can leave this whatever you want because Reprice Hub's always going to basically just keep this number the same. So uh, you could do one, you could do three. Um, it's good to have it higher than one because, you know, if somebody wants to order multiple quantity from you, uh, you want to actually have those available. So you could do 10, you could do five, you know, it's sort of, sort of up to you. I guess I'll do five for this listing. Um, and then you've got some toggle switches here. So when the item is sold, restock it. So, you know, if, say we've got five available, somebody comes and buys one, uh, Reprice Hub's going to basically immediately know that and then just update our quantity back to five. So we'll just always have five available. Uh, reprice the product on Amazon. You know, of course, that's that's what we want to do. Uh, if a supplier product goes out of stock, set the quantity to zero. So if Walmart becomes out of stock, we can't buy this anymore, automatically set our, our stuff to zero. So, yep, that looks this all looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and click on save. So now we've got Walmart. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Dang it. We've got Walmart under $35. And this is one of our templates. And, you know, you can just add as many of these as you want. You could have one for Zorro. You could, you know, do all these different ones. You could have Walmart over 35, Walmart with free shipping. You, you know, you can have all different templates, as many as you want. Um, but now uh, we're going to, we're going to, of course, select this when we go to list. But let's move on to repricing strategies. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add new. And um, I'm just going to call this one default. Um, you know, you can have all different strategies. Like maybe you want to have one strategy that matches the buy box price. Uh, of course, the buy box is right here. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of people selling on here, but this is the buy box. So you can just say always match this price, or you can say, you know, try to be a penny below this price or be a dollar above this price. You can set it however you want. And this is kind of where we're going to configure the competitive repricing, you know, stuff of uh, reprice up. So basically I'm just naming this default, but you can have as many of these as you want as well, or you could have different policies for different things. So competition size price, um, I'm going to just say buy box. Uh, you can also use lowest price. That could be a useful one if you want to compete, not with, uh, not with who has the, buy, the actual buy box here, but if you want to compete with whoever is selling for the lowest price, regardless of if they have the buy box, because sometimes new accounts can be selling for a lower price than the buy box is showing, um, just to try to get more sales. So like when you're, when your account's new, sometimes you want to compete for the lowest price rather than the buy box price, but generally you just want to compete with the buy box price. So, uh, I'm going to select buy box here, but you've also got, you know, some other options. And then our strategy, uh, do we want to match the buy box price? Do we want to price below it or above it? So, um, this is a bit of a prisoner's dilemma here where, um, I think prisoner's dilemma is the right word for it, where if everybody just decided, everybody who's drop shipping just decided to match, then we're all better off. Because uh, the problem is, if you say, I want to price below by one cent, imagine you've got two people on this listing, right? Um, you know, one person says they're going to sell it for this, and then someone else says, I'll undercut you by a penny. And then the other person's using the same software. They say, I'm going to undercut you by a penny. It becomes a race to the bottom, which is a problem. So generally, uh, when drop shipping, it's best if everybody does the uh, match buy box price because that way we're not driving the prices down and destroying our margin. Um, you know, it's it just sort of keeps it the same and people basically are going to go in rotation uh, for the buy box if we keep it the same price. Uh, you can do price below by one cent, which will, it's, it's helpful to you as an individual because it's going to get you more sales. But the thing is, if everybody who's drop shipping does this, it's really just destroying the margin for everybody. So uh, it's good for the customer. It's bad for us as sellers. So it's best to just do match uh, in general, unless you're a brand new account that has a real hard time getting the buy box. Because if you're matching the price, you're probably going to sort of get in rotation there and you're going to get the buy box some. Um, you can also do price below, but the thing is you just want to be careful because if you do that and then other people do it, uh, that can, you know, sort of just, it, it cause problems for everybody because you're really just destroying the margin when there's sort of no need to. Uh, so I would suggest doing match 
but also the price below by one cent also works and is a pretty good option. So choose what to do if there is no competition. When there's no competition, do we want to automatically drop our price to the, the lowest price we can be while still being profitable? Uh, do we want to just not reprice at all? Do we want to use our minimum price, use our maximum price? Uh, if there's no competition and we're the only seller, that's pretty rare and probably you know not going to happen often, but we might as well just use our maximum price because we're the only person selling it. We pretty much have a monopoly on this item if we're the only person selling it. So we might as well charge a higher price uh, and then you know we'll just get back to the competition once we've got more uh, competitors for the same product, but might as well use a higher price because you know we might, might get some sales. So uh, choose what to do if the competition goes below my minimum price. So if the competition is below our minimum price, that means we can't compete. We'd be losing money if we sold it. Uh, we could go to the minimum price, but that's a bad plan because we're losing money every sale we, you know we don't want that so uh, we could go to the maximum price which just sets our price really high and means we're not going to get sales um, or we can just not reprice um, I would probably go to our maximum price and then as soon as it becomes profitable again you know reprice up is automatically going to just pop in and you know drop down once it sort of gets in our little range now we're down to don't change my price when in the buy box so let's imagine uh, that you know we are here we're in the buy box uh do we want to update the price now there could be reasons that you would want to or not want to um you know an argument for why you would not want to would be like say you know this price changes a little bit and it would update well we don't want to lose the buy box by increasing our price a few cents so you know do we want to just keep it if we've got it and just say, oh, well, maybe we're losing a little bit. Um, you know, maybe we're not making quite as much. Or, uh, you know, do, do we want to basically definitely keep that buy box because the buy box is what gets you sales? Um, you know, don't change my price when in the buy box. We can say, yep, you know, keep it, keep the buy box, even if the stuff is changing a little bit. Or we can say, no, I don't really care. Just reprice my stuff to be accurate and Hopefully I'll get the buy box, but if I don't, whatever. Uh, so that's what I would tend to do. I'm just going to say, you know, there's no reason we need to like totally try to keep it. You know, there's an argument for why you'd want to, but uh, for me, I just prefer to say disabled, but you know, that's up to you. Um, and then also notice we've got choose the minimum seller rating to compete against. So what that's talking about is on Amazon, you see we've got all these other sellers here and notice they all have ratings. This guy's 74% positive, 61, 94, uh, 76, you know, all these different ones. Well, if your seller rating is really low, like for example, this guy, even if he had the cheapest price, he might not be able to get the buy box just because, you know, Amazon's not going to choose him because he's such a bad seller. Uh, you know, they might choose somebody who's got 90, they might choose somebody who's got 70, you know, but basically uh, we can just sort of tell it who we want to compete with. So maybe we've decided that, well, people that have around 61% or, you know, people who are below 70%, they're probably not going to get the buy box just because they kind of suck as sellers. Uh, we only really want to be competing with people who are at above 80 or whatever. You know, you can decide your own numbers. Um, but I can put an 80 here, for example. And so if somebody's seller rating is below 80, we'll just kind of ignore their prices because it's like... I don't care if you're a really bad seller and you're pricing really low. Since you're a really bad seller and Amazon doesn't like you, they're not going to give you the buy box. So I can just kind of put in here, oh, well, I'm just going to ignore anybody less than 80% because they're kind of irrelevant uh, for my repricing. So you can you can put that in or you can leave it off, um, you know, wh whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it blank here because I don't really care if their, you know, seller ratings low, whatever. I just want this to, you know, reprice the same way always. Uh, but if you want to do that, you can put in here and uh, that's you know, a useful feature. Uh, specify minimum and maximum profit margins. Uh, and I believe you can also change this to ROI or a fixed dollar amount. So, you know, like say you're like, okay, I want to make... Uh, you know, I never want to sell an item and be making less than $2 on it. Like if I'm not making $2 a sale, it's not really worth my time to even bother filling. So I'm going to say minimum profit is $2 and maximum profit. Now I know you'd think that this would be like infinity, right? Or whatever, like, but realistically, if it's like a pack of, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, this, it's a chair here. We're not going to sell a chair for infinity dollars. Uh, we're not going to probably list this chair for you know two thousand dollars so it's like it's you you, you do want to have like a top um just because people like, nobody's gonna pay two thousand dollars for this chair um so you know this you can decide what you want to do uh, this makes more you know in more sense in percents but let's say fifty dollars profit um for example if you're using dollars but it, normally i use profit margin uh here and so we could just say you know i don't really it's not worth my time if the profit isn't even five percent on the sale and maximum profit uh, i'll just leave it fifty because that's uh, probably a pretty good number. You could do like 100% if you wanted, um, but 
you know, honestly, probably 50% is pretty good. And so I'm going to go ahead and click save. Uh, actually, let me make, change the name here. Default, um, default strat, save. So now that we've got a repricing strategy and we've got a settings template here, uh, we can go ahead and go on to listing items. You'll notice there's a little drop down, and we've got list a single product or list in bulk. Uh, right now, recently, I've been doing uh, list a single product, but you could also list in bulk. That's another way. I just haven't done it a ton here yet. Uh, so I'm going to come over here to list a single product. And this is actually very easy. Uh, we just need to get the ASIN of the Amazon item that we want to sell on. So every Amazon item has an ASIN, and you can just control F to search for it and type in ASIN and you'll find it right here. Now, other convenient way, if you don't wanna to have to do the like searching for it, you know, to find it, um, if you look on Amazon, it's always in the URL just after the slash DP slash. So right here, you'll notice that is actually the exact same as the ASIN. So with every single Amazon item, you got amazon.com, whatever, slash DP slash the ASIN, and then a bunch of extra junk. So um, actually, I can even show you here, if we get rid of this and we get rid of that, uh, we just keep amazon.com slash DP and then the ASIN, go there. That's the correct link to the item. Uh, generally, if you're like clicking, you're going to get a big, long, gibberish, ugly looking link. But really, all you need is this kind of unique identifier, the ASIN for the item. So uh, I'll usually just grab it from here because it's faster than doing control F and typing in ASIN to find it. Uh, but you can, you know, you can scroll down. You can search for it, uh, or you can just copy it right here out of the top, uh, which is what I generally do. So copy that guy, come over to Reprice Hub, and we're going to pop in the ASI in there. And so we're telling Reprice Hub here, this is the item that we want to sell. Now we're going to tell Reprice Hub you know, where the item is coming from, like where we're buying it. Uh, and the answer, of course, is Walmart, and this is the link. So I'm just going to copy it, come over here, and paste it. And it's going to take a second here to pull the product in. There we go. Great. So we've got all the info here. And by the way, I should just mention, um, I know I didn't talk about in this video how to find products. There's I've done a whole other video on how to find good products to sell that have margin and stuff like that. This is just a quick example for the video. Uh, it could actually be a profitable product if you you know worked a couple strategies that I talked about in the previous video. Um, but this is not generally the type of product that I would be listing. I prefer to use more obscure suppliers rather than just Walmart because you know Walmart is... So overused, you can use Walmart if you want to. It's just a little bit riskier. You know, tons of people do use Walmart and are totally fine. Uh, it's just, it's better to use more obscure suppliers because you're less likely to have issues. Uh, but again, you know, you, you it's totally fine if you want to use Walmart. It's just not quite as safe and you're putting your Amazon account at a little bit more risk uh, sourcing from Walmart. But now let's get back to the settings here. So we've got settings. Um, and we can choose a template. So notice this is where our Walmart, <laughs> with the misspelling, because of course it's me typing, uh, Walmart under 35. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And notice it just adjusts this. This is the same stuff we set up under the settings template. I just adjust it to exactly what we want. So um, we are, you know, with our Amazon fee, our $6 for the shipping cost, all the stuff, shipping time, blah, blah, blah. All of this is correct. And then we got all that good stuff. So, you know, literally all you got to do, select your template. And then repricing strategy, we're going to go default strat because that's the one we set up under repricing strategy. So notice we're not going to make a set amount on each one. Um, we're going to make somewhere between the minimum profit and the maximum profit. And if we can't compete on the item, which this one, I don't think we can compete on the item. That's why it's looking like we're pricing it really high because of our repricing strategy. So if uh, this one wasn't so competitive, because we this one has uh, very, it is so much com competition um, that we can't actually do this one profitably unless we are working a 5% cash back strategy with Walmart Plus to get free shipping, then we don't pay the $6 of shipping. And if we have this credit card, we get the 5% cash back on our purchase. So basically, if we do that, uh, even selling at this price, we can actually make five bucks on the sale. But because of how I configured this, um, I did not enter the, you know, it, it's accounting for the $6 of shipping. So if we had Walmart Plus, we could turn that off. You know, we'd have the, the $0 shipping to account for. And then I tell this to 5% is the minimum, but I could set it to, you know, 0% because well, if we would sell it break even. And also I could account for the uh, cash back credit card, which is 5%. And I could set this to five there. And so now you'd see we would be pricing you know, right at the buy box price. And we would actually be making $5 profit. Um, those just aren't the settings that I would generally use unless I had Walmart Plus and the credit card. If you don't have the credit card, you got to take this off. Um, if you don't have, you know, the the... 
uh, Walmart Plus, which is just it's it's actually totally worth it if you're doing Amazon drop shipping. It looks like because it's you know saving you a bunch of money on shipping. But uh, if we don't have that, then you got to be paying this for shipping, which means that we can't compete. We'd actually be losing money without the discount and without the free shipping. Uh, and then with our our strategy here that we'd set up in the settings, uh, we basically told it that. If we can't compete on price because the price is too low, then just go straight to our maximum price because basically the listing is just going to, we're just going to sit there on the listing. We're going to be like uh, one of these guys here just kind of sitting out, hanging out, waiting, and not really actually getting any sales uh, until the price goes up. If this guy uh, like direct links drops off and Atomo Prime and then the price, you know, goes up to whatever the next price is, 40 something, 42 or whatever, then maybe we can compete at $42 because, okay, yeah, see so our minimum price right here is showing it would be uh, $42.32 uh, to just break even basically without those extra strategies. So if the price gets above that, then we'll pop in and we'll compete and we'll you know match the buybacks price. If we can't compete, because like I said, this is a bad item for, for us, at least in this situation without those you know extra things, then uh, we're just going to sort of sit here at a higher price and just kind of wait because it doesn't really hurt us to sit there and wait. But, you know, generally you want to actually list good items that will get sale that you can compete on. But anyway, just a, kind of a good example here. So all you got to do here is click create listing and that will go ahead and list it to Amazon for you. Or if we come over here to list in bulk, we can get the Excel file and uh, open that up. And this you can just basically fill out a spreadsheet and upload a whole bunch of items all at the same time and just have reprice up automatically. Boom, 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 boom. Create all those listings in your account. So uh, looks a little bit confusing here, but basically these are kind of instructions at the top for what all the different fields are. And then these are the different columns. So like say you wanted to you know, list on this ASIN and then a different one and a different one, um, you would just you know come to Excel and you'd be like, okay, this is the ASIN. Uh, and then I'm just going to paste the same one, but you know, these would be different ASINs. You could be like, okay, well, these are all these different items that I want to list. Uh, and then this is the SKU, the supplier cost, uh, sorry, supplier URL. So you'd get that from Walmart, you know, um, pop that in here and whatever you've got your, all your different settings here. If you want to list in bulk, uh, I generally just do the single lister because right now the bulk lister doesn't really protect you from items that could potentially be bad. Whereas the single lister product will warn you if there's an item that might be an IP violation for Amazon or something like that. So let me just give you an example of that real quick. You notice in the single lister that when I put this one in, I don't really have any like warnings or anything. It looks like it's all good. But if I put in a bad item, let me go find one real quick. So say I wanted to list this product, I'd copy the ASIN right here. Uh, and then I'd come over to Reprice Hub and I'd say, OK, well, I'm going to list this one. Uh, notice we've got this pop up here that says the brand Milwaukee may be under the protection of Amazon's IP policy. Uh, and we just basically don't want to list anything that has a warning like this. It might end up be nothing. You might be totally safe to list the product, but it's not worth the risk because, uh, you know, like why risk a product that could put your account in danger when you can just list products that definitely don't. Uh, so whenever, you know, this, this little pop-up thing comes in and it'll just sort of warn you like, Hey, uh, you probably don't want to list this item and you can ignore it, but I would not advise ignoring it. Whenever I get this pop-up that's red, I just say, okay, I'm not listing that product. Link products in bulk. This is more like if you're already doing a bunch of drop shipping and you are just, you know, switching over to Reprice Hub, like say you were using some other software that's costing you way more money and isn't as fast and things like that. If you wanted to switch over to Reprice Hub, this is where you can come to basically link up like, okay, well, this product and, you know, this is where I buy it and blah, blah, blah. So that Reprice Hub like knows where you're getting it and how to reprice and all that stuff uh, accurately. But if you're just, you know, like I I recommend just start off using reprice up from the beginning then you're not going to have those kinds of problems um, orders this is just you know your, your orders are going to show up here you'll see that your sales that you've gotten you'll see your, your profits all that good stuff and yeah that's basically it i think we've we've done pretty much all this uh the products page like i said that just shows your you know actively listing items uh, orders shows, you know, your sales that you've gotten. And then they've also got affiliates too. So if you've got a friend that's, you know, getting into Amazon drop shipping, you can recommend the software to them and then get a little cut of the uh, monthly commission there if you want. And oh, they've even got a request a feature button. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, I always just, you know, shoot them a message, but you can also click the request a feature button and then it just gives you a little pre-typed out message. I would like this functionality and uh, they will probably add it for you. So yeah, that's how you use Reprice Hub. And you know, I've already explained like why it's so useful. It's going to keep all your products price tracked, making sure that the prices are accurate for what you're selling. And then you've also got that competitive repricing in here that just makes sure you're always where you want to be competing with other people if you can, uh, and makes it super easy to list because you just, you know, list a single product, boop, 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 
post, boop, 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 post, very easy. And then you've also got the warnings at the top that tell you what brands are bad and things like that. And that's pretty much it. So now you should have your Amazon account created, uh, your Amazon account all configured, uh, which was in the previous section. And then this one all about setting up reprice up, getting everything ready and actually listing some products.